Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. In a previous episode on composition, we talked about the background and how important it was to get low and shoot up to render an open water, non-distracting or blue water background. Sometimes, however, we can also find a colorful or pretty or beautiful background to highlight our subject. In fact, some photographers will look, especially for macro, they'll look for a beautiful, colorful coral or sponge and then find that first to serve as a background and then wait for a subject to swim in front of it to have that really beautiful, appealing or colorful background. And that's what we're going to talk about this episode. So thanks for tuning in. Let's check out some examples. Here I was very low, kind of shooting up and this uh, beautiful angelfish, uh, the picture is not that good because the background, the coral is kind of distracting and cluttered. I have no separation. The subject doesn't really pop out at me. And again here, I'm kind of low and I'm shooting out with the turtle. I would normally have an open blue water background, but uh, you know, it's okay to have a nice diver in the background if the diver has a good profile and maybe looking at the subject, there's some space between the diver and the turtle. But here we have too many divers, not the greatest profile. They're merging with the subject. Uh, it's kind of a distracting background in my opinion. So what do we do? Well, one thing we can do is wait for the subject to move or the background to change and then voila we have a good background again again like here this shark was at first in front of some coral I followed it around from a distance stayed back and then it swam more into the open water and now I again have I, I have an open water background but we can't always achieve this so what can we do well we can wait to find a pleasing background sometimes we find the background first and we might even wait for a subject to move in toward that background if the background is so nice. Uh, this little um, blenny kind of disappeared uh, out of the corner of my eye and I thought it would be so pretty to have this beautiful green uh, background that I waited and waited and kind of directed my attention elsewhere and I was just getting ready to leave and then sure enough he popped his head out again and I think this image, the, the good thing about this image is uh, the blenny itself is nothing special, but it's so it's such a beautiful background. It makes the image so much more interesting. Same thing with this. Uh, this is uh, not an open water, not a non-distracting background, but in my opinion, it's kind of a pretty background. A squirrel fish in front of a beautiful purple sea fin. I like the background. I think the background here makes the image uh, look uh, stronger. Again, here's another a goby on a beautiful green background. It's the background that makes this image uh, more important. And again, I like, uh, I get more, more appealing. I like this, it's got sort of a green blenny with a complementary uh, coral, red and green, uh, sort of running behind it. And I really do like the colors, the red and green, and then uh, the, the green um, blenny. The background is what I think, again, makes the image. Here I'm not even low shooting up, I'm kind of above shooting down, but again, I think the background is kind of nice, it's sort of pretty. We've got the orange, reddish orange clownfish and the green, the complementary color, the green um, anemone, and we've even got some other fishes and shrimps in the background. So I think this is kind of um, a pretty background. Again, the yellow fish on top of the yellow brain coral, the background makes the image better even though it's busy and I don't achieve separation, I don't necessarily have a non-distracting background. Same thing with this here. I put my strobe kind of at an angle to highlight the texture and topography of the uh, background that this um, uh, fish was on. <clears throat> and here again, we have a nice uh, purple and blue feather duster worm kind of shot from the top on, not getting a non-distracting background, but I kind of like the yellow, the, the, the way the color, the yellow color uh, complements the uh, purple and blue colors of the feather duster. Uh, here, again, we have something in the background. We have the pectoral fin of this uh, flounder. I focused on the eye. The pectoral fin is a little bit blurred, but it kind of radiates out like a fan. And I think in this case, it sort of adds to the composition of the image. This, otherwise, you know, we could call it a distracting background, but I think here, it's actually nice to have that uh, fan-like pectoral fin in the background. Um, here we actually have this fish uh, uh, with a green background and a portion of this vase-like sponge in front of it as well. So we have something in front and behind it and that makes the image, I, I think, more interesting than if it was just an open water or a blue or a black background. And again, here we have the red eye of the octopus that I focused on and here there was some 
a red coral in front of it. And of course, we have limited depth of field with macro, so I focused on the eye, and we have the out-of-focus blurred image of the coral in front of it, same color as the eye. I think the nice colors, they kind of pop out, the red blurred coral in the eye. We have something in the foreground which blurred, which is blurred. I think it sort of adds to the overall composition. Um, <clears throat> and again, I just love this uh, beautiful red uh, background with the little blue dots uh, that, with, that, with other, that makes this image, in my opinion, appealing, even though the subject matter, the crab, might not be the most interesting thing in the world. So there you have it. Uh, if we cannot get low and shoot up and achieve a non-distracting open background to let our subject pop out, we can find a pretty or interesting or compelling background to create an interesting image. So thanks for tuning in. In the next episode, I'm going to talk about techniques we can use and approaches we can use when we cannot get a non-distracting background or a pretty background. What can we do then? So tune in for the next episode on composition with regard to background. And don't forget to, if you're interested, download a brief outline of this composition talk from my website, theaquaticeye.com. Thank you.